Hey guys, we just finished up the Tabatas for uh, March 17th, but we wanted to get a video out to you as soon as possible for the performance side, if you are doing the challenge. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty simple. Uh, we're going to have um, 100 kettlebell swings for time, a minute break, 100 air squats for time, minute break, and then max effort burpees for one minute. So we'll be able to crunch those numbers and the total sort of performance metrics and then add that in with participation, the pictures, and kind of decide winners from there. So um, just going to go over a little bit of stuff because it's really important that we have um, some consistency in the, the movements and then some safety concerns as well. So, yeah. so um, I'm going to, I have like a countdown timer set up here, but you can have some other sort of timer, but please try to have some sort of timer in your video screen so that we can see it. Um, when you start and stop at the end of this. You're gonna put this all together in one video. So we wanna see your video, your timer, minute break, video timer, minute break. Um, you know, just so that we know some people aren't taking a 15 minute break and, and crushing their scores. All right, so let's talk about kettlebell swings. Um, the biggest thing for this, honestly, is start and start stop with your kettlebell on the floor. Um, we say this every time we teach a kettlebell swing and still, half of the people are starting and stopping with the kettlebell hanging. So we'll just go over a basic swing and then I'll talk about a little bit of what we're looking for uh, in this rep count. So I'm gonna start about a foot behind my kettlebell. I'm gonna soften my knees and then hinge the hips forward. Reach for my kettlebell. I'm gonna lower myself enough so that I can touch my kettlebell. I'm gonna just tilt it toward me and lock down right back here my lats. Now my kettlebell is going to go right between my legs and then I'm going to thrust my hips forward to get the kettlebell up. When I finish, my kettlebell goes back to the starting position. It just helps keep your lower back nice and safe. So things that we're looking for um, in this kettlebell swing. Your kettlebell at the top of your swing should be parallel to the ground. It shouldn't look like this. Because that tells me I'm using my upper body and not my hips. The kettlebell is also a hip motion, a hip hinging motion. So my hips go back and they go forward. Back and forward. There's a little bit of bend in my knees, but not a lot. As opposed to it going up and down. Okay? So my shoulders, as my hips go back, my shoulders come forward and my shoulders come back. At the top, this is what we're looking for here. Nice straight legs. My butt is squeezed nice and tight so that I'm not like hyperextending into my lower back. Everything's nice and tight here. If you want a little bend in your arms and have the kettlebell at about shoulder height, that's fine. A little bend is fine as long as everything else is um, nice and tight. And I'm looking for the kettlebell to fall in sort of this window here. Somewhere between shoulder and above belly button. Okay, so especially because these are light kettlebells, I really don't want you guys to sort of play in here. Okay, get it up. Is that going to be 50 for them? Yeah, so we're just going to do 50, um, just so you guys can see what this might look like. Uh, it's going to be a 10 second timer. I'm going to go side by side in front. That's fine. Ready? Yep.
So if you're strong and you're doing it at 35, that might feel a little bit light, but I have a feeling by the time I got to 100, I'd be getting pretty tired. Yeah, I mean, I was, we were at 3.44 left on the clock out of a five minute round, so at 1.15. Yeah, and then you're only gonna have a minute break, so you're gonna do 100 squats, you have a minute break, and a, a one minute max of a burpee. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna catch up with you, so. Yeah, so, maybe, maybe I'll start off as fast as you can go yeah. on this first set. Um, the other thing I would say too is if you're new to this and you need to break this up into sets and take a little break, that is absolutely fine. Please don't hurt yourself to do this. Hopefully by the end of this program, you'll either be able to take no breaks or take less breaks. And all we're looking for is improvement here. So air squats. Air squats, remember when we say that we just mean they're not weighted, it's just body weight. So I'm gonna do from the side here. The biggest thing is I would like you guys about at 90 on your squat and coming up. It's fine if it's not exact, but I really don't want you guys doing this and counting that as a rep, unless that is absolutely as far down as you can go. Um, so I want my weight back in my heels and my butt to go down and back, like I'm sitting back in a chair. So if you guys are more flexible and you can be here, I don't want you to be. Look at how my lower back rounds and then I come up. So that's, that's not what we're looking for. I want you guys to stop it at about 90. Up, squeeze your booty at the top. The other thing that I want you guys to think about is trying to get your knees and toes forward. Um, for some of us, we have some nice open hips, and you guys are used to doing squats like this, and it's really just not the same movement. So I really want you guys to work on, it's okay to take your squat just a little bit wider, but I want you guys to go down and back with your knees and toes forward. Okay. And I got two more. 50. I'll go straight and go sideways. Yeah, so I am going to uh, restart my timer again on this, and then we're going to hit 50 of these. Ready? 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Yeah, that's gonna catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 348 of the five minute round. It's a little faster than the swings, about a minute 12 for us there. Um, it's important when you do these to sort of keep an eye on what it is that you've done that day. We had this Tabata set here that was a crap ton of legs. So my legs are really tired, and that's fine. Um, it's mostly for you. You know, when you go back and do this again, just keep track of what you've done that day or what you did the day before, so you really get a measure of your progress. Also add that be especially meticulous about your form on the first set, because if you're not exercising that much right now, you're going to get better. Your form may improve, and so I'm going to judge this as a percent of improvement individually. So if you do poor reps at the beginning, and then Get better and get good reps at the end, you're actually not going to perform as well. You will have done better because you did better reps because numbers are going to be off. So, the other thing, too, is like you guys, if the, if the rep form is really, really off, we're going to ask you guys to film it again uh, because otherwise it's just too hard for us to judge. Okay, so I'm not doing max burpees for one minute after having done this box set, you guys. And I don't recommend that you guys do this post workout either. Do this before you come in. 
for your workout. Do enough of a warm up that you're not going to hurt yourself. But, you know, after the spot is not the best time to do it. So we'll talk about burpee form because, wow, we've gone through so many different iterations of burpees to try and keep people from cheating their reps because in tests like this, because some people go through really fast but they're just not doing as much work as everybody else. So we're really going to ask that you guys try to keep this form tight. Um, I would rather see somebody with good form and less reps. All right, so when I go down, my hands, my chest has to touch the ground. Please try to land with flat feet. Up and back. Now, if you're here, I'm okay. But I want you guys to be mostly vertical for your jump and clap. Okay? So what I'm talking about is we had a lot of people who were going here. And that's a good way to get a lot more reps in and seem like you've outperformed everybody else. But the fact of the matter is you haven't done what we asked you to do. So I want you guys to at least be close to vertical. I think another thing that I see that's actually a little harder or slow you down is people will sprawl out and do a negative push up here. Yes. And then come back up. It's not necessary. You want to pump the reps up with the heart rate. Then you're going to go back up and down. Like yeah, that. and just so we know, we understand that this is not a push up. Okay, so that's why we do push ups separately, and you'll see push ups come up in this, in this course as you're following. We understand this is not a push up, this is heart rate. Up, up, up. And you just won't get your heart rate up as much if you slow down and do that form perfect push up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, straight them all together. I'll have a written so description. I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to do like 10 okay. burpees. Will you count for me? So I don't have to count. So, yeah, I'm going to wait for the timer to start. And I'm just going to do 10 burpees. And I'm tired right now, but I'm going to go pretty fast because I know I can for 10. You guys, a minute is a decent amount of time if you're not used to that. So, pace yourself. Ready? I'm going to wait for that and then go.